As she held her firstborn, she listened intensely to the advice from the doctor about how to make sure that her pride and joy was okay. Such as, keep your baby warm and make sure your child is always hydrated and has plenty to drink. And upon feeding your son solids, make sure it's rich in nutrients, fruits, veg and whole grains. Immunizations are a must. And that includes the flu. But make sure your child stays active. So she mentally took notes, trying to ensure that she did everything so that her everything could one day grow up to do anything. So she never once imagined herself being stood by a hospital bed, with her son hooked up to IVs, near death by 20, but strong in faith, she prayed to God that today her son would fight it. But before you jump to conclusion that her son was a bad breed, mixed up in a gang life, merely living by the sword and risking a chance of dying by one too, or before you jump to conclusion that her son was at the wrong place at the wrong time and probably took a bullet or a stabbing for her next you, I'll ask you, please listen to he side. Because he'll probably express the distress of having to go through a constant cycle of having 18, 22 and 24 inch needles constantly jabbed into his veins, all in vain. And he'll probably explain how steroids became something he depended on from the young age of one. And how frustrating it was not knowing whether he'll be spending Christmas Day, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day or even his birthday in a hospital bed. And how TVs, books and a paper and pen replace friends because at least they stay consistent. But again, I ask you not to jump to conclusion because no, he wasn't a boy lost to the streets and it's not every day jump to conclusion about the people you meet. Because in the same way that I said son and I said he, I could have easily said daughter and said she. Because she'll tell you how from young she had to learn to be a fighter and train to be a beast so she could always fight back, refusing to be a victim and seen as weak. But she'll tell you about the constant low self-esteem, questioning why she couldn't be like them, why she couldn't play out in the cold with her friends. And they'll both tell you what it's like. Constantly being hooked up to oxygen tanks, expected to be near death by 20, denied of possibilities and told that the chance of having a child are slim and struggling to have that all sinking questioning what marks they get to leave behind in the world, faced with all the uncertainty of the world, in a world where people simply don't understand. But they'll all look at you in the eyes, some of them with their jaundiced eyes, DNA that they can't hide, as they represent a mass of sickle cell patients blessed with a burden that made them stronger than me. Because what they saw as a hindrance made them beast, constantly fighting back, no room for another setback, because ain't nobody got time to die, so we tell sickle cell to step back, fall back. Because it's a condition that has grown men falling to their knees. With the hardening and clotting of sickle cells forcing vessels to fight for oxygen they need, you will no longer be the thing that tries to drown dreams because I know many who made it past 20 and some who've even had babies. So to my sisters, my brother-in-law and the beautiful ladies I met last week and anyone suffering from sickle cell disease, the next time it tries to pull you to your feet and has you questioning whether you are weak and you're almost signing defeat. Remember that every last heartbeat is a reason to keep going. So let's all tell Sickle Cell to get going. Because God's got your back. You are the elite.